five is five. Okay. We're recording. Okay. All right. Thank you for inviting me to give this uh, short lecture. It was just, as, as I said earlier, some of you weren't here yet, a, an impromptu interview with Jackie Wallenberg at her show at Pacific um, Textile Arts in Fort Bragg. And there is a link in the last newsletter that explains Jackie's whole sort of beginning and interest in textiles. And just a few really quick details. Uh, she lived in Berkeley for a long time before she moved to Fort Bragg. And she did get a degree in art history from UC Berkeley in 1955. And then she went back again and got a degree in textiles, a master's degree uh, when Ed Rosbach was there during his very last years. And that was in uh, 1978. And a contemporary friend of mine that I went to art school with was in the class with Jackie. So even though we're you know, quite a few years apart, they were all together in this class. So Jackie's done all kinds of different things in every technique almost that exists within the textile world. And it's very interesting work. And so, um, okay, Sue, have fun at the fair. Anyway, the, um, uh, we're going to try to play this m m little movie, which goes around her whole show. You might have to turn your volume up a little bit, just on the outside chance to be able to hear it. I'm just giving that a heads up. And then I'm going to go through a slideshow that I put together of all the pieces so we can look at each one a little bit longer. And so what you have to do is miraculously retain all the information from that she says. And so then when we watch the slides, you'll know all the information for all the slides, okay? <laughs> anyway, all right, here we go. Okay, now I'm gonna be sharing the movie. Can everybody see? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. And now I'm going to hit play and let me know if the volume's okay. I'm sorry. Kathy's friend Soren hung the show for me along with Kathy. And he was really, really patient. He, I kept saying, a little to the right, a little to the left. Please exchange that one for that one. He was wonderfully patient. Yeah, very good. So we're happy to be here with you on your 90th birthday exhibition, retrospective exhibition. So what are you, your message for the world, you said, uh, the weaving world? One step at a time. One step one at a day time. at a time. One hour at a time. <laughs> one minute. <laughs> you're right, you're right. So we have this most wonderful exhibition here. If I just cruise around the room a little bit, you can take it all in. The protest pieces are over there in that corner. Okay, so let's see. She said her protest pieces. So one for the... Gulf War and one for Iraq. Okay, so these are the protest pieces. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So which one is which? The top Gulf War is the top one. The, the top one is a protest for the Gulf War. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then this bottom one was a... Villages falling down. The, the, the American and the <laughs> reference to the American flag. This is not my favorite piece at all. I don't show it often because the design doesn't work for me, but some of my favorite weaving is that actually in it. Some of, some of the sections of it, mm -hmm. uh huh. Yeah. down below, some of your favorite mm -hmm. little details. So this was a protest weaving for? The Iraq War. The Iraq War, okay. All right, and then this one here, when did you make this one? Supplementary warp, sometimes in the late 70s. A supplementary warp in the late 70s. It's mm -hmm. got this amazing detail in it. You so subtle. If I zoom in, you can see that the supplementary warp is raised loops almost like velvet. Mm -hmm. And there's two different levels of of pile, so to speak. So that's cool. And then what's the story with this one? It's also supplementary warp. This is also supplementary warp. So this piece is hanging sideways from the way it was woven. And you have the little fringe on the side. Slightly damaged on the left. <laughs> Oops, slightly damaged. So maybe the dog got too close. Uh, some, something got it. <laughs> something got it. And, and then this one. Another Ooh. supplementary warp with some. So this has a dyed warp. A dye job. Okay, so an ecot. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And then there's tons of these and tiny little. And those are, those are. 
The bottom one is called uh, My Cup Runneth Over. My Cup Runneth Over here on the bottom and one. The upper one is uh, inspired by my ginkgo trees. Ah, inspired by her ginkgo trees. Right, those are ginkgo leaves. Oh, ginkgo leaves. There we go. I want a little bird in there. Is it? <laughs> well, it looks like it. Maybe. The beak of a bird. All right. So here we, we're in Pacific Basin. The I mean, Pacific here is, is okay. Berkeley Marina. Okay, this one is the Berkeley Marina Ooh. on the bottom. Mm -hmm. and, and above it is um, Monday morning in Yalapa. Monday morning in Yalapa. And the top one is a, one of the corn tapestries. The corn tapestry. So the corn tapestries, there's several in the show. There are several. There, some of them were done down in El Tuito. Yeah. El Tuito. And then a few baskets here. Mm -hmm. Kelp baskets. Kelp baskets. And then we've got a pair of scissors. Looks like they're oh, yeah, floating. Oh yeah, that's um, Cutter at Sea. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this one's called Cutter at Sea. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Instead of a, a <laughs> boat cutter, it's a scissors cutter. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then we got the floating watermelon. That's right. Which is on the website. That was inspired by a 10-day stay at Sinsa Beach. Oh, okay. So did you actually see a piece of watermelon floating in the ocean? Not floating in the ocean, but the house I stayed in was from some cousins. And they had a, a bunch of artifacts high up on a shelf, and I pulled one down and spent some time drawing it. And then when I got home, I thought, I got these drawings, I should turn it into a tapestry. Oh, very nice. I had been at the sea, so there you go. And then does this have something to do with the fact that you're a, a tourist? A tourist. Here we go. I don't know that. It's a piece I sold. I thought it was a little cutesy for me. Oh, okay. We but went. Elaine Todd bought it and she brought it back for the show. Oh, nice. Well, very good. Elaine's a big supporter here, former mm -hmm. president of the board. And then we have, let's see, diamonds in the forest or something here. Hmm. Uh, with like little animals. Oh, there is uh, one was inspired by uh, Jean Pierre and Yael's backyard in El Tuito. Oh, okay, there we go. Um, they, they have banana trees in their backyard. Oh, nice. And then this was another Berkeley, Berkeley Marina. Berkeley Marina. This is a big tapestry here, you can yeah. see. So there's a, uh, if I go down, there's the light plate switch, so you can have a scale <laughs> reference. And uh, Next let's see. This one is the little, alley, the little yellow alleyway in Puerto Vallarta. Oh, this is a, a yellow alleyway in Puerto Vallarta. Very nice. And you turn the corner, and that's Tessie's totem. Wh whose totem? Tessie's. Tessie's totem. Okay. And so, did that? What was the inspiration? A dog that I used to have. A doll. A dog. Oh, a dog. Okay. Yes. Yes. There we go. A Doberman. So it's different photographs of the dog, and then you mirrored it to make a. Well, yeah. I mean, it's inspired by her. It's not really a picture or anything. Just an inspiration. Quite a unique dog, if that's what you look like, huh? Mm -hmm. And then here's yeah, some more. That's a row of corn tapestries. Okay. More corn. More corn, and then. Si Wait. maiz, no hay país. Without corn, there is no country. Oh, without corn, there is no country. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the next one's a corn. Very tapestry. good. Okay. And then I did a series that had. Yes, oh, that's, a, that's the acrobats or something. Acrobats, and then? And then I did no, and I did cassis, and I did C, and I did yes. Okay. But yes and C got sold. Okay, and we have more uh, figures. More stick figures, that's called attitudes. Attitudes. All right, so we got all the different attitudes you that can have. That was actually Brennan's favorite piece in a show. Oh, fun. Well, so, so do we have to go through and guess? Let's see, no, you're happy, no, you're sad. We need to do that. <laughs> they speak for themselves. Okay. And then and we... These are about rectangles. About rectangles. Okay. Very good. The bottom piece was inspired by a workshop at... Um, oh, what's down in Monterey? Um, a C. Lamar. Oh, a C. Lamar. Okay. One of the cinch... Lily and Elliot and Pat Hickman workshop taking photos of footprints in the sand. Oh, nice. I came home and 
Bit of Loretta made this fine patch out of that. Very good. All right, and this was. And these um, were all inspired by a, a trip to Canyon de Chez. Okay, and these were inspired by a trip to Canyon de Chez. So the, at first. So they, the ruins. The ruins. They seem very abstract, but then when you tell well, us they are, they're, they're there. They're then there. when he, when you tell us the theme, you just have to know that they're there. You can you can understand the design once yeah. you get the theme. Okay, and then the spring piece. That's a photo piece. of a spring. Oops. Spring. Beginning spring piece. Spring, and then and then the photo of my daughter Kathy. Oh, a photo of her daughter Kathy. And a little bit about how how some of my tapestries are made on foam core. Okay. Those. All and right. Then some collage. Collage. Stuff some more Very good. Oh, and a spring, spring bag here. Some old pieces of spring bag and a few pieces that Kathy brought. A few scarves and a few more bags here mm -hmm. on an Indonesian loom, I think. Yeah. Okay. And then oh, also yeah. book. Well, this is hard to capture in a photo, but you also did book binding, right? Mm -hmm. And now uh, there's more tapestries. There's that was a inspired by a photo of a thin section of a mineral called about look on the back of that. I'm sure. Oh, okay. That's Let's see here. So, so Amphiboly. Amphiboly. Yeah. Okay. And I just did that by memory because I love those intersections. At looks, different angles. Looks like you're in a cave or something. Yeah. Uh, and then this one looks like an onion. It's hard yes. to... I don't know what I was thinking when I did that. Let's see, this is hard to see because of the photo, uh, reflection of the window. But anyway, and then these are all a whole bunch of... Let's see, if I go down, if I walk slowly... I know if I stand over here, you can kind of see everything in here a little bit better. This is all Kumihimo braids. These are all the Kumihimo braids. Fabulous. And then right above your head Oop. is a wedge weave. A wedge weave. There we go. Okay, and then we're back over here to our You're all the way around. Come full circle. Okay, and there's and the down on the floor almost. Oops there are a couple of photos Oop. of my method of doing supplementary works. Oh, okay, so this is a picture that shows the technique used to have the supplementary warps lifted mm -hmm. out of the warp right. by the pickup sticks, and then then the sticks are pulled out after you weave it. Exactly. Yeah, that's pretty explanatory. Well, that's good that you did this. I didn't chance Very of good. getting a copy of that. Okay, let's see here. So now I'm going to... That was great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Jackie, so you can see all that Jackie did. Yes. Anyway, um, so now uh, I'm going to do the uh, PowerPoint presentation. So I'll do the screen share. And... Sheila, how do you want to handle questions if people want to ask you something? Oh, they can just interrupt me. Okay. Okay, is that working? Yes. Okay. So let's see. All right. So here's the picture. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, yes. I see, I see heads nodding. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this, I just went there uh, to see her show at the last minute. I thought, you know, I would just scoot over there and this is Jackie sitting in the middle and then me on the right and Adrian Nicolaisen, another weaver over in Fort Bragg. I worked for her when I first moved to Lake County doing production yardage. I went to her studio and wove 362 yards or something crazy. Anyway, um, so then this is the, I'm giving you the overall shot and then the close-ups. So this is the the one wall with all those pieces. So this is, I've tried to put the slides in the order that we just went through in the movie. So I have the pieces. This was the uh, Gulf War. You can see the smoking oil wells. 
and the little birds in the foreground. So Jackie played a lot with different sizes of yarn in her tapestries. If you can see in the upper part, I guess, does my mouse show? Yeah. Um, up in here, there's the gold uh, tapestry weave that's going on that looks coarser than down here. So what she's done is she's employed pairs of warp threads here and then individual warp threads here. So the different scale of weave goes with the different sizes of yarn. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then what I've done is I've put the pieces and then a detail on the right. Now this one, uh, she said these were like the villages falling down and the, you know, crashing from the war, basically. So it's an abstract interpretation of her uh, protest against the um, Iraq war. And here's the warp brocade again. So this one is hanging sideways from how she wove it. So that last picture in the video where those little pickup sticks were stuck in to the weft, lifting up the different warp threads, you can see that that's how this is happening. So the little sticks are stuck in these places and then pulled out afterwards. And the same with this one. So the pickup sticks would be going across here. If anybody has questions, just speak up. So then this looks like it was almost dyed in three different sections with that kind of magenta stripe in between. So this is um, an ecot. I'm pretty sure this is tied. I don't think it was just painted. I don't know, does anybody have two cents? Oh, Lynn's not here to ask. Anybody else do painted warps or ecot in this group? Yeah, I've done some ecot and that's what it looks like. It was probably wrapped. Wrapped, okay. Yeah. Thanks. I think that's Jamie's voice. Thanks. Yeah, it is. Thanks, Jamie. And so then this is the next wall. And so basically Pacific Textile Arts uh, was the reincarnation of Pacific Basin of School, Pacific Basin School of Textiles, which was in Berkeley from 1972 to 1986, started by Inger Jensen and Pat McGaw, and then kind of went dormant for a while when Inger, Inger moved back to Denmark to take care of her mom. And then Jackie started it up again in around 1993, but out in Fort Bragg. So it's the same, uh, you know, 501-3C nonprofit, but now it's gone from Berkeley to Fort Bragg. So they raised money and they bought this small little uh, Victorian house and they've been working on it forever. I mean, almost 20 years now, um, fixing it up. And so there's in this front room is the living room of the house. And that was the fireplace of the house. And they've turned it into the gallery. Uh, since then, they've um, gotten the city of Fort Bragg has donated them two trailers, a single wide and a double wide. So now they have a big, huge classroom. And then another, the single wide is their library. And then they built another building that has a huge tapestry loom in it. So this is her cup runneth over on the left and with lots of colors, no less. I'm not sure. Has anybody found that kind of discount wine at the grocery outlet? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway. <laughs> These are the jokes. Okay, so then on the right, she said those were her ginkgo leaves. And this, since she lived in Berkeley, I'm sure she went down to the Berkeley Marina quite a few times. And so here's a tapestry of all the boats and the nice kind of wavy reflection in the water. It's very nice at the bottom. And so this one would be woven sideways. Um, those of you who do tapestry are familiar with that. So basically, if you want to try to make a line, you want that in the weft direction because it's too hard to really weave a vertical line in a tapestry. Well, I mean, it's possible, but not the easiest. And then this one, I think, I forget what town she said this one was in, in uh, Mexico. It's Yalapa. Oh, Yalapa. There we go. Okay. You can see the little laundry hanging out and the clothes on the line. And then this is one of the corn tapestries in a fancy frame. And then there's another one on, a far, on this long skinny piece, which I think again is one of those um, warp brocades, maybe with dyed warp brocade. Then she also did a series of pieces where she would mount them onto 
like a mat board of some sort. And then the, the design of the tapestry would go continue on to the mat board. See this little purple, this is painted up here and this is painted down here. And so it's kind of fun way to extend the design a little bit bigger than what you're weaving. I didn't ask her if that was on by accident or on purpose, but then you can also see these kind of things, which are called uh, lazy lines. And those were used in some of the Navajo weavings where there was such an, a big expanse of one color that they would use different wefts, weaving like this section or weaving this section. And so they would have a diagonal and that would make these little kind of lines, even though it's all the same color, it adds a, another texture to it. And here's the watermelon that was from a picnic, not really floating in the ocean. But this one is shaped again. So you can see here the warp is going up and down. And so the, the lines are made with the weft going horizontally. And then this one has been cut off the little frame that she did it on. And then the warp threads have been sewn back in. Can you see this? I'm going along the edge. So it would be cut, cut, and then you know maybe cut a couple inches above and then sewn back in to make this shape. Now this was her pun, the cutter, instead of a ship was the pair of scissors. And now this one has all kinds of drawings going on in the background. Now the, in, the square in the center is the tapestry, but the outside is drawings. It looks like on gut maybe, I'm not sure paper anyway. And this was a kelp, kelp baskets. Lots of kelp in Fort Bragg. I'm not sure. I guess I didn't, she didn't say anything about this one, but we could guess. What do you think? A little abstract bird? Does anyone have any ideas? Nope. A slug. A slug. <laughs> a slug. Okay, there we go. We'll have to ask her. And this one is pretty abstract again too. I'm not sure about that one. And here's the Taurus one. Now this was woven in several pieces and, and pieces were added on top of other pieces. You can see the edge of this head was uh, woven as a tapestry and then shaped and then sewn on top of another tapestry. So from the side here, you can kind of see the dimension of the extra pieces. Now this one is like a mother and child here. Now this one on the left was, did she say this was um, in the backyard or the garden of uh, Jean-Pierre La Rochette and Yale Lurie. They had a tapestry studio down in El Tuito and Jackie would go down and, and take classes. Jean-Pierre La Rochette and Yael Lurie are a couple that have woven tapestries forever and ever and ever. And they're just absolutely amazing. If you Google their names, you could find what all the amazing pieces that they've done, tons of commissions. Yael was the designer and Jean-Pierre was the uh, weaver. He said something about banana trees in their backyard. And I think okay. that black thing in the bottom left corner, oh, that has banana-like leaves, bananas. Oh, okay, yeah. It just looks like a little rooster. Mm -hmm. So she had fun in this one. It looks like she kept to the same scale of yarn, maybe some shinier ones and some dull ones, maybe a mix of rayon embroidery floss with wool. But you can see she kept her warp uh, consistent throughout this one. So here's two more of these little tapestries. Now here's another lazy line going on at this one. And this was the alleyway. Looks like a little cat, maybe, the tail. And here's the large tapestry of the Berkeley Marina. Once again, she's used a mix of different yarns together to get sort of a texture and a blending of colors, which adds a new dimension to it. If it was all just solid browns, it wouldn't give the same effect. Now oh, here's the next wall. Mila, can I ask a question? Yes. If you like, um, the last one that you showed, the, the reflection in the water, when you're creating something, what's, how do you work on a reflection? 
I mean, it just seems so difficult to be able to do that and keep it in the right spot. Well, she's probably working from a photograph and maybe she made a full scale cartoon. Mm. And then she's just following the lines of the car of the drawing or the cartoon. And yeah, so think, okay. if, the, if the photograph has wavy lines in it, then you just follow the wavy lines when you when you weave the reflection. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty you sure. Know, is this, sorry, is this one she will have done sideways as well? Yes. Yeah. You can see the ridges of the warp going across. That's usually the, if you need to try to figure out what's going which way, if you look for the ridges of the warp threads, that's usually a clue. Thank you. Sure. And then this one is the next wall with all these pieces on it. And uh, her, did she say Doberman, I think, her dog. And so this is a pretty abstract interpretation of a dog. So that's <laughs> fun to see. This one is woven, I believe with um, silk also in there. So in person, it's quite shiny. But this one, again, she's doing the two different sizes of weft yarn. So she's got warp threads doubled up or used singly. Now here's some more of the corn pieces. And she had said that what this means, the translation of that, uh, those Spanish words are without corn, there is no country. So I don't know if they were having a drought or what's going on with that particular statement. But then um, you can see she was inspired to weave all these tapestries of corn and all the little kernels, different colors. It's really quite fun to see how she's interpreted the corn. And then I did call her to clarify this and she had woven three tapestries and one said yes and one said no. And then this one here, this is the Spanish word for maybe. So I, I said, did the yes, no, and maybe have something to do with the corn? And she said, no. And I said, okay, uh, so it's just the directions in life. You have a question and you're not sure if you should say yes, or you should say no, or you're, you're, maybe you just say maybe because you're not quite sure. So that determines the different paths that you go on in life. And she goes, that's right. <laughs> so that sounds good. And then the bottom one is the little acrobats. And then um, here's some more details of the corn. See how beautiful this is when you zoom way in and look at the fine, fine detail. The colors are really just magical. So there's a close up of that one. So this is an interesting thing where she's filled all the little um, enclosed spaces with another yarn in a different scale. So here's the maybe on the left and then the acrobats on the right. And this is the one called attitudes. So we'll all have to guess. This looks like a good one, happy. This is muscle, muscle man. <laughs> I don't know. We could spend a lot of time here, but we'll just scoot on. And then this, was a series um, based on um, rectangles, she said, but it's also how you make a rectangle from triangles. So those are a combination of um, weaving and paper. So this looks like handmade paper going around the outside here. And then these are little separate pieces where she's woven. I don't know if she added those on afterwards. Yeah, this one is going in the opposite direction. So that must've been added afterwards. But when you weave tapestry, you can use two colors at once and you get this uh, sort of little grid pattern that happens by using two colors at once. Sheila, a question. Yeah. Is, is that um, just um, the paper behind, is that just something she added and then put it onto the, the mounting of the tapestry or was it involved in the tapestry, the paper? I don't, I think it was added after. Okay. It looks like it was sewn. There's like little stitches going around. Yeah. Maybe that was sewing it to this canvas. Uh -huh. That's how she mounted it. Wonderful. Okay, thank you.
but it almost looks like it's cut out along the edge, like a little frame in a way, because there's no way that the edge of the tapestry would look that smooth. So maybe she used it like a little, like a mat almost, like a paper mat. Can you see what I'm talking about? Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Thank you. All right, so there's more paper involved in this one too. So that one looks like it's several pieces cut up and put together, a collage almost. And then the right is the Canyon de Chez. And so you can see what I was saying in the movie that it, until you hear the word Canyon de Chez, you're really not quite sure what they are. So, but it does give the essence of the Canyon de Chez, the little caves and the houses. And then this was footprints on the beach at a Silomar. And I think she said she made a nine patch out of it. So that's a term that's used for quilting, right? So she just used it for this nine little tapestries. Now she weaves some of her tapestries on foam core where she just puts little uh, pins in and you can see the warp is wound back and forth. And I think just for fun, she put her daughter's picture underneath there. So I don't think she actually ever wove that piece, but this gives you an idea of how you can put a cartoon. And the, the word cartoon is a little bit misleading. I mean, we think of cartoons in the newspaper or books, but um, in weaving, they use the word cartoon for the drawing that was made full scale to help you follow while you were weaving. And this is Sprang. We had that lecture by that lady on Sprang. So basically you put a warp on, goes up and down between these pegs, and then you twist the, the thread, you go through with a pickup stick and you kind of, it's almost like Lino weave in a way you twist, you get the one after to come up before the one before, and then you, you twist them around. So what happens is the action that goes on in the warp, in this warp of the spraying repeats so whatever goes on up at the top goes on at the bottom and you go towards the middle because you're twisting the threads it go it, they're twisted on both sides i'm not sure if i'm explaining this very clearly but basically when you twist a thread in here it twists it at the top and at the bottom right it doesn't just twist on one end because it's all continuous so this looks like you know she didn't ever finish it or this was a in progress piece of spraying. Sheila, a question for you. Do you remember from either this or from your own experience or the, the workshop or the presentation that we had, what happens when you get to the middle? Oh, you pray your stick doesn't fall out. <laughs> <laughs> but basically you go across the middle and you sort of tie knots and secure it. Uh. I mean, it is kind of scary. I mean, knitting, at least you got to pull it and the whole thing will come out if someone rides away with a bicycle attached to your yarn. <laughs> but in spraying, if you lose that stick or you lose that tying across the middle, the whole thing goes, wing, wing, wing. <laughs> it's not, not a pretty picture. And so I tried to just zoom in a little bit on some of these pictures. You can't quite see exactly, but it gives you the idea that she traveled all over the place and this might be some giant, uh, I don't know, that hat or a dome or a building. And then this is looks like some fair where they're demonstrating. And then we've got goats and horses and all kinds of stuff. So there's a closer shot of that, whatever that building is. If anybody has any idea what that is, speak up. <laughs> and uh, dinner parties by candlelight outside. Here's yarn dyeing in the middle at the bottom. That might be Jackie on the right there. And then this is another sp spraying piece. So you can see this is this this connection connection here is what's holding it from coming apart. Also look like she attached it to this outside frame. But you can see that the bottom is a mirror of what's going on at the top. And then they just sort of progressed at a different rate. So this triangle ended up longer than this one, but it's still, if you counted these little circles, I bet you they're the same number in the top and the bottom. Now here's another bag and then two scarves. And you can see this is a, looks like an Indonesian hanger of some sort. 
and then this actually is a reed from an Indonesian loom. Then they actually they make for great hanging uh, fe um, features. And this is the next wall with that picture and then the case by the windows. And I tried to zoom in a little bit here. You can see Jackie smiling away and weaving and all kinds of different stuff going on. Not sure what this top picture is. Oh, this looks like a warp weighted loom. She did learn uh, weaving uh, in, in Denmark. Her husband was over there for three years or so and she took weaving classes, but the lady wouldn't teach her unless she learned Danish. So she hurriedly learned Danish <laughs> so she could learn weaving. Anyway, she's quite the adventurer and really has learned and embraced all these different techniques and cultures and textile techniques around the world. So this one on the left is that mineral that she's talking about, the amphiboly. It's a type of quartz, looked it up. And then on the right is the wedge weave. Now that's a type of tapestry weaving, but instead of having your weft horizontal to the warp, you weave at an angle. And so it makes this kind of scalloped edge when you take it off the loom, kind of weave these little triangles. And here's that case again. She did a lot of book binding and uh, also tons of uh, kumihimo. And here's Jackie on the right at a floor loom. Not sure what year that is. And uh, here's another piece that she had. These were in the kitchen over in Fort Bragg. And she wound up, looks like magazine pages, or rolled them up and glued them and used them for weft. Made three different pieces. And then here's another one with a mother and child, similar to that one, the other one that we saw earlier. And here's another example where she did a tapestry and then she shaped it and then she painted more of it on the canvas behind it or that it's mounted on. And once again, in this one, she's using double warp threads and then single warp threads. And this was another piece in the kitchen. And I thought it was, it looks to me sort of almost like a heart shape to love birds. That's, I'm just going with, uh, we're ending with the picture of lovebirds. How's that? And Jackie. So I swiped these pictures from those collages and collages. And then this one on the right was on the website. So you can see her smile has just stayed the same for 90 years. Okay, <laughs> here you go. That's it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, great. thank you. <laughs> So hopefully you remembered what she said in the uh, movie. So part of that carried over into the slideshow. All right. How interesting, Sheila. I mean, how exciting it wants me to get to the loom and do something. Now, is she still working up at the art center? Oh, yeah. She's still. In fact, I forgot to point out that in that uh, picture of her at the restaurant, she had a little plated bag and in it was her Kumihimo disc. <laughs> It's like, in case I'm waiting too long for my entree after my salad, I can do some cooking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's like all of us have something in our purses to work on. Oh, yeah, definitely. Anyway, the uh, yeah, so she's an amazing person, and I've known her for quite a few years, and it's just been a pleasure to get to know her and take that movie. And then actually, when we got married, uh, at the, you know, as a surprise after 42 years, I, we wanted to go out to Fort Bragg because we'd stayed at the little apartment on top of her garage. And, and so I said, oh, maybe we can go over to Jackie. So I, I call her and she doesn't answer the phone. And then I call Holly Brackman and she said, oh, she's down in uh, Yalapa at a tapestry retreat or something like that. And uh, I'm like, oh, she goes, just email her. She has a blog going. I'm like, what? And so I, I emailed Jackie and sure enough, she writes back right away. She happened to be on her computer when I emailed her, even with the time difference. And she said, yeah, sure. You can go there if the lady staying at my house can find the key. And <laughs> He found the key and anyway that's where we went for our honeymoon so we have a special relationship so that's and she's great. still you know working through pacific textile arts they have classes and workshops it's only 15 dollars a year to join and then you can get on their email list and um, they have a newsletter and um all kinds of diff different things and they're they have they're a great resource yeah i met her at the boonville fair a couple of years ago and uh, okay cool Great, thank you so much, Sheila. If, if there aren't any yeah, more questions, I will, I will end the recording. Any last questions? 
oh, I think she was, uh, Lynn was going to go through with the recording of the, oh no, not the show and tell. Okay, so we're ending yeah. the recording. All right. Yeah, ending that. Okay. Thanks, right. Thank everybody. you, everybody. Thank you. Okay.